Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. My name is Levi Clay and today I am going to talk to you about a book. A book that lots of people have asked me to talk about so I purchased a copy, again thank you to my supporters on Patreon, and I read through it and now I'm going to let you know what I think. So, Steve Vai's Videology, love the title, Basic Music Theory for Guitar Players by Steve Vai. So, what is this and why do you need it or why maybe do you not need it? Let's see where we go with this. So, of course, as the name would suggest, it is a music theory book written by Steve Vai. Now, you know, if you're unfamiliar with Steve Vai, you're probably not watching this video anyway. You would have no interest in something like this. Steve Vai, uh, notable guitar shredder, you know, composer, one of the greats of the uh, rock side of our instrument and yeah definitely an inspiration to many he was uh, absolutely one of the big driving forces among my circle of guitar playing friends when I was growing up and this is yeah he's never really been a huge teacher never been a huge teacher it was surprised me that he didn't have instructional videos growing up um, but of course he knows his stuff a graduate of Berklee College of Music I'm sure he graduated uh, and of course, then a long history playing around the world with guys like Frank Zappa would be one of the more notable music-y ones. But of course, you know, White Snake, he played with White Snake and um, played in Alcatraz and but of course, well known as a, as a solo artist. So why would you be interested in this? Is this something that we really need? Do we really need another music theory book? I would argue probably not. Having said that, I can see the appeal. If you have never gone out of your way to learn music theory, and it's something in the back of your mind you think, maybe I should get around to doing that, and then one of your guitar heroes says, hey, here's a book where I teach music theory. I can see how this might be a great way for you to get into that. And for that, it's a great thing. Now I'm gonna turn the book sideways. It's not huge. It's not a massively thick book. If I go into my library over there and pull out some of the great music theory books that I have, they're all three or four times thicker than this. So it's by no means comprehensive, but it's a it's a good starting um, place if you've never dealt in this music theory side of things. Now, to be completely honest, if I tell you what my the thing that impressed me most about this book is, you're probably not gonna be impressed with what I say. But you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, it's in color. That really surprises me, um, and I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't need to be in colour. I've never looked at a music theory book that was, wasn't was in colour and thought, you know what, this would be so much better if it was in colour. Um, but it is a nice touch. Doesn't really add anything though, but again, a nice touch. Aside from that, the theory contents are broken down into sections. So if you look at, say, the first, um, uh, the first part of the book where we have notes on the neck, Steve breaks things down into academic studies, um, ex experiential studies, and then uh, like an advanced section on, on that concept. Is that right? Or did I miss something? Yeah, in, in essence, that's how we're breaking things down. Now, <laughs> initially when people suggested I should read this and let people know what I thought about it, my initial thoughts were, no, I don't really... Uh, Steve, he get, he can get a little bit artsy fartsy with things, and he's you know I I know a lot about music theory. I don't know if I'm going to be able to recommend a book that's probably going to recommend that you go and meditate meditate hanging upside down in a tree while naked for four years, uh, because those are the types of things that Steve would suggest. And there is some of that in here which I don't actually agree with. Um, you know, when learning the notes, he suggests playing each note, and uh, I probably should have. Um, you know, listen intensely. It's a good idea to memorize the notes so they're instantaneously recognized on the neck without having to think about where they are. Take the time to give the note your full attention by just listening as deeply as you can and recognizing on the subtle levels how the note makes you feel. Merge your being with the name of the note along with the personality, emotion, and color of the note. See how the notes differ in hue from one to another. In doing this, you're essentially creating an intimate relationship with each individual note. I don't I don't get on board with that as a concept whatsoever. Um, so there is, there's likely to be, a, you're gonna find a lot of that in here. Um, I don't feel that's the best way to be to be learning notes. So if stuff like that is gonna annoy you, probably not the best book for you. But if you can get by that, like I say, it's gonna be a good introduction. I do kind of take issue with the name, Basic Music Theory for Guitar Players, and the focus here is guitar players. This should really be focused on guitar players. Uh, but it does go on, and when it's teaching you about notes on the on the stave, uh, where is it? Been here somewhere. 
There we go. Musical notes. Oh, look, he used a piano. You know, why would you do that if the focus is for guitar? And there's also a bunch of other things in there that I kind of look at and I go, well, should this be in here? Things like, you know, chord spelling and advanced study on chord spelling. That makes a lot of sense in a basic music theory for guitar players. Whereas when you're getting into like, um, oh, advanced polyrhythms, yeah, definitely beginner stuff there, Steve. Good work. Uh, some of the scale fingerings are a little bit odd to me as well. Uh, notes on the manuscript and academic study, all well and good. And then you get into advanced clefs, and there's you know it's a page devoted to bass clef, and the bass, uh, yeah, standard bass clef, baritone clef, tenor clef, alto clef, mezzo soprano clef, soprano clef, French violin clef, treble clef. Now you know what. I don't think I can ever recall actually seeing someone use soprano clef. So for it to be here in a book on music theory for guitar players seems a little bit odd to me. Also, there's a long section in here talking about tablature, um, which, of course, nothing wrong with tablature. It's something that I, I talk about all the time. Uh, but when we talk about guitar tab articulation and ornamentation, he has, you know, how these things are demonstrated on the page, what a hammer-on looks like, what a pull-off looks like, what a slide looks like, what a bend looks like. Now all of these I can I can get on board with, but then there are things like, uh, here are some obvious ornaments, and he's got bend hat. Now, first of all, how is that different from a bend, Steve? You don't really explain that, and also, I don't see this in tablature, really ever, ever. This is yeah, the the way that he's choosing to tell you this is how you notate a hold bend. I disagree with that because that actually only applies if you are using the Hal Leonard method of putting tab up. If you use another style sheet, another house style in order to do your tablature, it's actually inaccurate. So yeah, not my favorite book. Um, having said that, you know, is it worth adding to your collection? For me personally, not really, and that's why I'm going to be giving this copy of this book away to one of my patrons over on patreon.com. But yeah, it might be something that you would want in your collection if you are looking to get into music theory. I feel there may be better ways to do it, but it does say Steve Vai's name on it, so you're probably going to buy it anyway. So yeah, there you go. Any questions about this book, do let me know in that comment section below. I'm happy to, uh, yeah, happy to tell you everything that I can. Uh, if I were to score it... It would be a reluctant seven, a reluctant seven, because I feel if I give it anything lower than a seven, you're gonna absolutely abuse me. I don't feel it's tip top as far as music theory books go. It's not bad. I could definitely point you in examples of books where, you know, this is garbage, you should throw it in the bin. This certainly isn't that. But uh, yeah, it, it functions for what it is. So lastly, I want to say a huge thank you to these guys over here. These are some of my supporters over on Patreon.com. Um, they purchased this book for me, and one of these guys is going to get that given to them. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. You'll be lucky. Uh, yeah, uh, you should say thank you to these guys for bringing videos like this to you. So thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate the support. Uh, if you would like to be like one of those people, you can check me out on Patreon up here and being with a chance of winning this of course uh for as little as one dollar you can subscribe to my channel by clicking this button down here somewhere and check out two more of my videos here and here thank you so much for all of the support guys i really do appreciate it and then as i say any questions let me know in that comment section below i'm gonna go and do some practice you should probably do the same laters